Hello friends. So I'm just covering this series of uh, 2024 IDSA guidelines that's come in as a snippet series uh, because it's a 50 page document. So, but it's terribly important that we have some homogeneity with the type of prescription practices that we would have adhering to the core principles of evidence. So today I'll be just talking about CREs, which is very, very common in ICU. Which is, which is carbapenemase resistant enterobacteria. So we need to have some clarity as to the choice of antibiotics with CREs in UTI. So today I'll be only covering UTI. It's a snippet, maybe three to four minutes. So it's come in 2024. I urge all my intensive care colleagues to read this document. It's a nice 50 page, 52, 52 or 53 pages document. So when, what, what do we understand by CRE organism? So we need to have some clarity as to what, what are the typical carbapenemase resistant enterobacteria, uh, because these are dreaded organisms and they're resistant to carbapenem. So we need, we have limited choices with other antibiotics, which are non-carbapenem. So enterobacter species is one of them. And I've just put the picture of these organisms so that it is entrenched in your mind. Enterobacter cloacea and Enterobacter aerogenes. That's common. And another commonest, commonest, commonest one we see day in and day out in ICU or E. coli. So these are the commoner CRE organisms. And there is Citrobacter fruendi also. So organisms looks like something like this. And the most, the second commoner ones or commonest after E. coli, the type of organism we see is Klebsiella and it looks something like that. Morganella morganae, we tend to see more in deconditioned or decompensated patients, especially who have been in ICU for a very long time. Pseudomonas, we tend to see in typically immunocompromised, at least in India, we tend to see more often in immunocompromised patients who are on chemo or on poor patients or who are in neutropenic. So they tend to have more of pseudomonas and serratia. So these are the commoner CRE organisms we tend to see in ICU and if you get an organisms, their predilection to having resistance to carbapenems are higher and you may have to do molecular testing to see the genetic or the gene coding uh, and place the antibiotics accordingly. So now we look into what does IDSA recommend for uncomplicated UTI. So these are possibly not typically seen in ICU, but occasionally we do see some patients coming to us who may have this concomitantly uncomplicated UTI, predominantly confined to the bladder, which we call it as cystitis or uncomplicated cystitis. So the simpler choices, IDSA, I think one antibiotic, I want the audience to little pay attention because IDSA has put emphasis on sulfamethoxazole, trimethoprim, and in India, it is currently available as IV formulation put as to trimoxazole. So keep this in mind because IDSC puts this as one of the choices for all CREs as a car, as a sparing sort of a drug for any other higher end sort of a uh, combinations that we tend to use. So trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is recommended by IDSA and a very simple antibiotic, but provided there is susceptibility to this. So obviously, you wouldn't give this when there is resistance pattern in your cultures. If there is susceptibility, to these and with resistance to carbapenems, you can use ciprofloxin and levofloxin, which I'm sure most of the audience are very adept to and very familiar with these antibiotics and nitroferentoin. Although it is simple, if there is sensitivity to it in CRE also, this can be used in uncomplicated cystitis because these antibiotics tend to attain very high and good urine concentrations. So the other simpler choices is aminoglycosides. So we know in ICU, aminoglycosides have a very important role because we see very often resistance to most antibiotics and there may be a sparing of aminoglycoside. In ICU, we are limited to its usage because most of these patients who come with UTI tend to have acute kidney injury. And uh, since if you are using aminoglycoside as once a day dosing, it is important that we have some sort of a therapeutic drug monitoring so that we dose this aminoglycoside properly in patients with EK. But this is another choice. And phosphomycin is recommended. It is available in, in oral formulation and urologists tend to use this. They love it. But IDSS suggests this has to be used only for E. coli, not for Klebsiella, not for Pseudomonas, not for Morganella, not for Enterobacter, cloacea, or aerogenes. 
So only for E. coli, there is a recommendation from ADSA for phosphomycin in uncomplicated. In complicated, you will see this is not recommended. And the advanced choices, which all our intensive care colleagues are very much familiar and they use very often is colistin. So you're all very familiar with the dosage. So colistin is suggested by IDSA as advanced choices. And ceftazidim avibactam, which is the drug of this sort of a decade, I would say, because or maybe in last five years, because there has been extensive usage. Ceftazidim avibactam is still a good choice for CRE. There are drugs which are recommended by IDSA, which are unavailable in India, which possibly we may see it coming soon is miropenem vaporbactam that is also suggested and recommended or imipenem relibactam and we are all desperately not we means I think all our intense care community seem to be desperately waiting for cef Derequal because this seems to be a good drug like septazidim avibactam which is positioned for all these CREs that is also suggested and recommended by IDSA. So this is the choice keep this in mind for uncomplicated UTI. But what we tend to see more commonly in ICU is typical hydroerythronephrosis, complicated UTI coming with urosepsis with pyelonephritis. So that is something we look into choices. And for all these choices, there's no robust trial data for uncomplicated. Polymyxin B should not be used because polymyxin B does not attain urine concentrations and it is excreted by non-renal uh, sort of an excretion. So it's not suggested. So we look into complicated UTI or pyelonephritis, which we tend to see very often in ICU. Possibly this is day in and day out. These are the garden variety cases that come to ICU, UTI with hydroerythronephrosis, and they go for getting the stent put in so that we drain all the pus. So what is the choice of antibiotics for CRE, which is carpopenemase resistant enterobacteria in pyelonephritis? So I want audience to pay attention. Even here, if there is susceptibility to sulfamethazole and trimethoprine, IDSA suggests this could be used. And in India, we are fortunate to have this as an IV formulation. And there is good evidence for this. So there is a recent Swedish trial that's come in Lancet and in JAMA 2000, which sort of uh, sub, uh, substantiates or endorses the usage of trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, even in complicated UTI. This is something... Uh, which possibly audience should consider to spare over usage of septazidim avibactin, which we tend to use. And um, polystin is something that they have not recommended for pyelonephritis because I'm sure many of us, not many of the uh, intensivists would be using polystin for this. So there is no recommendation for that. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or cotrimoxazole is something you can consider for even hydroerythronephrisis with pyelonephritis where there is susceptibility to it. Even ciprofloxin and divofloxin could be used and if there is susceptibility to aminoglycoside, one could use it, but it is recommended that uh, therapeutic drug monitoring is done to optimize the doses, especially most of these patients who come sick with hydroerythronephrisis tend to have acute kidney injury and you may have to dose it appropriately. In ICU, when you're using ciprofloxin and levofloxacin, be aware it can sort of lower the seizure threshold. So we have seen patients sometimes coming, having some, some sort of side effects. So bear that in mind. Advanced choices, like you saw in uncomplicated cystitis, there is a recommendation for colistin, but in pyelonephritis, there is no recommendation for colistin. It's only septazidim abibactam. And the ones that are unavailable are also recommended, which is miropenem, weberbactam, imipenem, relibactam, septerecol, which we are all eagerly waiting. Phosphomycin, which was suggested for E. coli in uncomplicated cystitis, is not recommended for CREs affecting the kidneys with pyelonephritis. Phosphomycin is not recommended because of uh, its ability to attain good concentrations in the renal parenchyma. It has a limited concentration in the renal parenchyma. So phosphomycin is not recommended. So these are the choices, friends. So keep this in mind. So we'll stick to good evidence-based practice and don't use uh, uh, colistin for CREs in hydroerythronephrosis, which I'm sure many of them may be using. So stick to simpler drugs. If there is susceptibility, I think the take-home message is if there's susceptibility to sulfamethoxazole trimethoprim, which is very seldom used in ICU, one could possibly consider if there is susceptible. If there is no susceptibility, the choice has become limited. It is only septazidim and abibactam and uh, ciprofloxacin and aminoglycosides. Very often we see sensitivity. You can use aminoglycosides.
so thank you friends i'll come with more of these uh, sort of recommendations that is coming in idsa as a snippet to help all our trainees to have a good stewardship uh, sort of an approach towards uh, prescribing these advanced antibiotics thank you friends request you all to submit your valuable work to journal of acute care and of course visit my website to read to this lecture thank you friends thank you and all